Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be a small production run. Um, they're going to be little air gun tips for my customer. Uh, small production run, pretty simple. We're going to be drilling a couple of holes, um, doing some threading, a little bit of relief for the threading. Pretty simple. Uh, it's going to involve the lathe. We're going to cross drill in the mill. So without further hesitation, let's get started. So we're going to start by loading up the center drill the actual undersized drill bit and then the final size reamer. Now I've put these in here, I, I actually set these, these are floating. Um, well actually they do float. You loosen up these two set screws and this whole mechanism will float. I've had similar size drill bits in here already uh, so they're kind of preset but we'll get to the final setting once we once we load up the whole turret with the tools that we're going to use. I will say this, I've tried to load this whole thing off camera. I've tried to load the, uh, the die and the die is very, my die holder is very, very long. Um, and when you're setting up a turret, you have the, the throw and when it, it, it has to be pushed so far so it will click and engage and actually actuate the turret. Um, so I have to divide all the steps into, you know, all the operations into a couple of, uh, a couple of steps. Now with a turret lathe, you have to adjust your turret position um, to your shortest tool. At least this is how I do it. So that's going to be my, my center drill. So I extend my turret fully out. So you can see it's stopping. And then I'm tightening. You can see if it, it's, it's probably moving here. I'm just turning the stop, the hand stop, the, the uh, set screw, the stop screw. Just turning with my hand um, and I'm just backing it out, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch just so I have some fine tune space. Okay, so I want to come in here. I want to retract about, I don't know, about the size of where I got to go. Bring it forward a little bit more. And I say I want to lock it about there. So now the turret is locked in place. So now I have distance to drill. I have distance to read. Now what I want to do is I want to adjust my size. So what I did was the overall length of the part is 894 thousandths. So I put 20 thousandths onto that. So what are we at, 914 or so? And with my calipers, I adjusted my square for convenience stop, right? So I could come in here, if I can make some room. A turret lathe gets very crowded. So I bring my parting tool down and I basically move the stock in to where it's all size. It's touching here. The parting blade is touching the edge of the scale and I locked it in place. So now the size, the, uh, the size, the overall length plus 20 thousandths of the stock is left here. So now what I want to do is I want to bring the stop right to the work and I want to adjust the turret stop in the back with an allen key which I'm doing right now you just can't see it and as I turn it you'll see it lift off see that so I just want to kiss it and just make sure that it stops right there set my stop what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this around And now I'm just tightening the stop in the back. Camera's not picking that up. All right, so now our stop is set. So what we'll do is you would come over here. You would press the stock in like that and press in and then lock it. <clears throat> Putting the drag on it prevents this thing from touching. And then when you, then when you start closing the, the collet closer, it wants to suck the work back a little bit. So putting a little drag on that kind of prevents it. It's a bit of a technique you got to learn, but all right. So we have this guy set. 
I believe we have this guy set. Okay, so the, now the next operation is going to be setting our uh, parting tool to put the little uh, relief in here for the threads. So now to set the piece, I'm going to try to explain what I have here. So our stock is going to come here. We're going to have a groove and we're going to have the threaded area. Here is our parting blade. And here is the 20 thousandths that I left extra. But we know from here to here it's 15.5 millimeters. So what I need to do to set my other parting blade, the one on the tool slide, I can't go 15 millimeter, 15.5 millimeters from here to the edge of the blade. I need to go 15.5 millimeters plus the, the 20 thousandths that I, I left here, this way. So let's go over to the lathe and we'll go do that now. All right, now I'm going to show you a little bit of real-time frustration. Sometimes these turret lathes can really get the best of you. They're not like a, a conventional lathe where you could just move everything right into position. You need to slide things and use gauge blocks and it's uh, it's its own little science. So I have a parting blade that kind of sits in the middle and I have another parting blade that sits on that side. So there's really no easy way to touch this side and that side. So what I did was I dragged the parting blade around and kind of scribed the line. I created a gauge block stack which is going to be uh, 15 and a half millimeters plus the 20 thousandths it comes out to 610 uh, is it 610? 630 I take that back 630 and I did a, a, a 500 and a 130 gauge block stack I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna touch the edge of my parting blade and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the unthinkable now I'm just doing this because the camera's in my way, but I'll do this a lot more critical. I'm going to eyeball it and visually sight the edge of that line to this edge here. But I'm just kind of doing this a little quick and dirty. I have, a, I have some tolerance here. I left myself some extra material. And what I'll do is I'll make some test cuts. So, so let's get back to what I was saying. I'm going to move this. I'm going to lock the slides and then I'm going to lock it in place. Uh, with our Allen key and then what I'll do is I will make some test cuts. We'll come in, we'll make some test cuts <laughs> and adjust accordingly. I have plenty of material so I'm going to do that right now. I have to move the camera um, and, and I'll do that off camera and then we'll lock it in place. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through a whole cycle of making the first phase of the parts. Obviously, the parts aren't going to be completed in one setup, so this is really setup one. And just to repeat, we're going to size, we're going to counter bore, uh, center drill and counter bore, um, drill, ream, and then we're going to size the shoulder down, take off some burrs, and part it off. Since this is a nominal size diameter, um, 7 16ths. I don't have to machine the outer diameter at all, so I'm going to just polish it with some uh, 400 grit emery cloth. So every couple pieces I'm doing this. And then I'm going to finish it up with some stock print. We have enough, just enough to get our face cut going. Let's get it on. We're going to center drill. Make sure we remove any burrs. 
Now we're going to drill. Now I want to get, because this is um, very shallow flutes, the chips really bind up and clog up very, very fast. So I want to get a steady stream of oil going. And I want to get a good bite in and start going for it until I start feeling the chips clogging up. And you'll actually feel it and hear it. All right, we've hit our stop. We'll go in slow motion on this one for the reaming operation. This is literally all done by feel. You could feel it going in. You could feel, you could feel how the reamer is let, uh, you know, is being let into the hole by cutting slow. Okay. Now we're going to use our box cutter and reduce that diameter down. Get it ready for threading. Slow speed for the thread relief. Now we're going to come in, we're going to take off all our burrs. Now you're probably wondering why don't I have a tool to put that chamfer on, because I'm just out of tools. <laughs> So I put a, enough of a chamfer on here, and you can feel it's smooth, to, uh, to allow the threading to go on. And when the thread is cut, then I'm going to put uh, a final you know, visual chamfer on it to make it look nice. Alright, so we are going to aim our oil into our cut to part this guy off. Make sure my hand is not in the way. Okay, step one done. Okay, we got all our parts, first stage of all of our parts on there. Again, there's only 30 of these, so now what we need to do, as you can see there's a there's a little nub on there, and these things need to be sized down to final size, which is eight hundred and ninety-four thousandths. So I set up a simple um, a simple tool on the hard hinge, and all I'm going to do is just face cut them down to size. I have a stop inside the collet, so they're going to bank up against the uh, register up against the uh, the collet stop. I'm going to size them down, and then after that, I'm going to set up for drilling. Because there's only 30 pieces, I'm not going to sit and put the whole turret together and try to get as many operations. It's just faster to do a one-off operation. 30 pieces, change it around, and go for the next one. So let's go over to the hard inch and we'll check out my setup. Right, this is pretty simple. So we got the, uh, the NTK inserts on here. These are a, a very high rake carbide insert. Uh, they cut through stainless steel like it's butter. Final thousand. Nice and easy. You gotta do this kind of a little weird with the camera. Okay. So we're looking for eight ninety four.
And we have seven here, we have 23 more to go. Now, it's worth repeating again, there's only 30 pieces that I have to do, so it's just easier to do like a one-off operation, run the 30 pieces, set up the next tool, where applicable, you know? All right, with the pieces done on this side, and we got them center drilled here, I'm gonna just put this, I have a stop set up on my 5C collet, and what we're gonna do is drill, I'm gonna ream, and then put a counter bore. I'm bringing these around with my hand, so I'm not actuating each step, which is faster to spin the carousel that way. Breaking through now. Whoops. Slow shift for reaming. Now the next operation is to drill the cross hole through here. So I have this, um, I have it dialed in on my DRO. I'm using the collet block, 5C collet block. So I really just put the piece in there, snugging the back, and I'm just tightening it down with a spanner wrench. I'm using a using my Royal quick change tooling here. And I'm gonna start with a, a center drill. Then I'm gonna switch over because I don't have that many tools. So this chuck here uh, is gonna serve dual purpose. I'm gonna drill with it and ream with it. goes. Put in our drill. Now we're going to load up our reamer. Send it through. Now, because I don't have a lot of tooling, uh, you know, like more chucks and, and whatnot, I'm going to still have to counter bore or counter sink this side and the other side, and I'll show you that procedure uh, using some dowel pins to reline it up. It's it's a total inefficient way to go, but you know, when there's 30 pieces and you don't really have all the choices and that much tooling, you got to kind of do what you got to do. Now the next operation is to uh, chamfer this. So this is kind of a weird way of doing this. So I have a, a gauge pin that's the exact diameter of this hole. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the pieces into the collet and I'm sending the gauge pin down and I'm keeping it a little loose. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten the vise down just enough so this collet could slip back and forth, this collet block. And I'm doing that so I could tighten this. Because as you know, when you tighten a 5C collet, uh, it sucks the work back in. So this, this needs to float a little bit. So now that the pin is, is uh, located correctly, tighten the block down. This slides right out nicely. I'll take the, uh, <clears throat> the guide pin out. We 
we've got our stop set. And now I just rotate it 180. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bring the taper of our center drill and locate the part. And you see it's, it's kind of locked and I just snug up the vise. Hit the camera. Undo it. <clears throat> now these are, uh, there's still a little tiny little burr here. You know, you never really get it perfect. So I'm going to put these into the, uh, into the collet and I'm going to run some emery and clean these up and make sure that's all polished out. Now uh, you could see this is one of my earlier test pieces that I ran to when I was setting up the next operation that I'm going to film and that's the threads. So let's go do that now. Alright, we're back at the hard inch now and what I'm doing is taking this tiny little like wire burr here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to just send the reamer back up through here just to kind of like get any burrs or anything like that. So I'm gripping, <coughs> I'm gripping on this unthreaded surface right and, and what I'm doing is just slipping this on the reamer I'm just putting it in my collet, locking the collet, and I'll come in here and I'll clean. You can feel it. It hit the area, uh, you know, where the cross hole is. Come over here, put it up to high speed, I'm trying to lean over the camera here the right way, and uh, I'm just emery clothing it. I'm using a little 400. Let me do this this one. It's enough, you know, the, the, uh, the pad of my hand is enough to actually find its way into that, you know, almost like a detent. It pushes the paper into the hole and it really cleans up the, the burr nice. Probably hard to see, but we'll, we'll show it in the next step. Um, but this is smooth. This is smooth, beautiful. I have seven more to do. Once we're done with that, then we'll move over to the south bend for the final step to, uh, to thread the, the ends. What I'm doing here is I have a collet set up and I have a 45 degree tool and I'm putting a nice, pretty nice, generous uh, lead-in chamfer. I, I started threading, I ran the die and I kind of mangled one of the pieces. So uh, I'm putting a nice lead-in chamfer here and again, why so many steps is because I just didn't have enough, uh, you know, tools and holders and spaces on the on the hard inch. So again, 30 pieces. It, it's real easy to just go in, come in, put a nice little chamfer, bring it to zero. I have a nice, beautiful lead-in chamfer. Getting ready for threading. All right, so the thread that we need to cut is a 1 8 27 NPSM. That's a pipe thread, but it's a straight pipe thread. There's no taper to it. So let's take a look. Uh, let's just double check in the machinery's handbook. All right, so looking at the, uh, the pipe threads here, these are NPSM. So this is, uh, this is a straight pipe thread, mechanical join. They're, they're not tapered. A lot of people think of pipe threads. They think of the tapered stuff for plumbing and stuff. These are... Th these are uh, straight threads. 1 8 27 uh, we're looking at the external threads so we have a range here we could go 397 for the biggest diameter 390 for the smallest diameter. I, I favored the lower side I don't I, I forget maybe 391 or so um, so we're just double checking so we're gonna go over to the lathe now and we'll put our, our die into the lathe and cut some threads all right, so I have the turret loaded up here in the lathe. We'll put our part in. I'm only gonna do one of these just to kind of just show the procedure. I have the machine in back gear. And what we'll do is we'll put some threading oil on. Now I'm just gonna push this on by hand and once it hits the stop, it will spin. It is reverse. Let's get the 
this out of the way. Pretty easy. We have, I don't know, 29 more of these to go. Well, that's it for this one. We're gonna get these parts out to the laser etcher. Um, all my parts need to be laser etched with the blueprint number and the serialization. We'll get these delivered to the customer. Um, I like filming these jobs. It gives you a little insight to what I'm doing here at Maple Lane. And um, until the next job, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.